right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tom Jacobs, who is actually in Taiwan, the first person we've had actually interview who's, who's in Taiwan. So that's a nice first for us here. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing well. Ni hao. <laughs> Excellent. And Tom is impact pilot, improving sales, public speaking, customer service, one business at a time. And today what we're going to talk about is follow up with leads, getting them booked on for the call. So yes, lead follow up, a, a perennial, a perennial discussion point in any organization and a, a perennial point of conflict, I think probably in many organizations between sales, marketing, and everybody else involved. So, so, so Tom, um, why, is follow, why is lead follow-up still an issue? Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's so funny because it's such a needed event that happens, but people have this connotation that it's a low value type of work. And, and really, that, I mean, rightfully so sometimes because people you know, when you're trying to follow up on leads, especially if they're coming online or things like that, you know, people forget that they filled out a form or they're just at a different space where when you finally get them on the phone that they're rude to you. And, and so it becomes this, well, why am I even following up with these people? Or it takes 11 touches to actually get them on the phone to take an action. And who has time for that? Right. Is what the thought process is. Well, if you want to make a sale, you better find the time to do it. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, you'll always get that kind of uh, argument about, oh, well, uh, or, or number one, okay, the thing you said about the 11 touches, people still give up too quickly. I think that's, uh, that's an issue. Um, there, and sometimes too immediate, I think, too, as well. It's like, okay, Tom has not responded to me in the first two weeks of me chasing after you. Therefore, it's a dead lead. Yeah. But... But you're not operating on my time frame. No, right. It's <laughs> on their time frame. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. So how should uh, how should people how should people approach um, leads and follow up on leads and working leads? Yeah. So my philosophy is consistent and persistent. Uh, the first thing happen like the first touch that comes in has to be within. 10 to 20 minutes, well, zero to 20 minutes, no longer than 20 minutes from when that lead comes into your system. Um, whether that's in phone call, web inquiry, what have you, especially for web inquiries. And in fact, it, this, this whole idea started for me personally, I, I owned a fitness business for uh, nine and a half years and I was moving facilities and we, I needed to order some rubber flooring. So I called three or four different rubber flooring companies and I was, I was on one and it was rubberflooringinc.com. <laughs> plug for them. I still, you know, this was seven years ago. I still have it. In. So I'm on their website. I fill in my name and phone number like I did on three other websites, still waiting for their calls to this day, by the way. And literally the like two minutes after I hit the enter button, I was still kind of looking at different samples that they had on. I get a phone call from the sales rep. I'm like, I'm still on your website right now. He goes, yeah, I mean, we just really want your, you know, to help you out, see what we can do to help. And I was like, wow, this is pretty awesome. Long story short, one week later, I had $10,000 worth of rubber flooring delivered to my facility. Yeah. Uh, and, and I guess the thing is that sometimes people are, are reluctant because they think, oh, well, that's a bit too quick or a bit too pushy. But the fact is, I think in, it's a great example that you just raised because especially nowadays, people are well, they say they're so busy. I think they're so distracted. That's my Distract. thing is. Um, but so if you don't hit them almost at the point of impact, like you like you were right there, 10 mm -hmm. minutes later, an hour later, a day later, you know, who knows how many things have distracted them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we, we so I operate a call center as well. And so we're, we're mm -hmm. doing the follow up, follow through for people. And, and we'll get leads at, you know, two o'clock in the morning. Like, 
who at their local time so yeah who's call who's on the web at two o'clock in the morning <laughs> looking you know obviously i don't suggest 10 minute phone follow up on that one mm -hmm. that comes in it's during normal call times but by the time we call them at nine o'clock in the morning they're like i don't remember filling out a form for a webinar right. or this discovery <laughs> call i'm like well of course you didn't you're half asleep and on probably on the toilet or something you know so <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's it, it is it is it is incredible how how just how fast people move on these days you know uh, and and i think that's part of the key so so when you do the follow up uh, tom how do you do it in an elegant way because sometimes you can have the opposite like impact i mean like the rubber flooring company you can have you know you you fill in something and somebody calls you and they're breathlessly trying to sell you immediately and all of this and you're like whoa, whoa, whoa back off yeah well, it's it's all in the scripting. So mm -hmm. that I mean, that's the the key is to make sure that you have the proper scripting in place that has the tone of the company that you represent. So if it and and nobody should be pushy because either these are people that are requesting information to begin with. They requested a phone call. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to get you on the phone. And you know, there's there's you know snowflakes in every. Every well that oh you know don't call me I'm going to report you to the you asked me to call you you know yeah. it's like how do you get my phone number you entered it on the <laughs> form that you filled out oh, oh okay yeah but it, it's just like hey you know you you gave us a phone call and that and that's always our opening line as well it's like I'm calling you back right because you filled out this form online and so it's. I'm calling you back and so they're like oh who did i call because you filled out a form online and now that starts the whole memory jogger do you remember doing that and that's always the first question that we ask do you remember doing that oh yeah, 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 yeah i did that and then yeah. and then starts off the the conversation and then in terms of you know three days down the road we're leaving a voicemail we're leaving a text message if we get a voicemail back or a text message back and says hey i'm no longer interested fine Drop them. Yeah. We're, we're out. Yeah. So, uh, so if somebody doesn't explicitly like uh, rule themselves out, then you know you continue to, as you said, consistent and persistent. Yeah. Now it's in. It's not every day for, for yeah, a yeah. year, <laughs> but by any stretch of the imagination, because it that lead is going to cool off for a while, and you mm -hmm. don't want to bombard them each and every day. So. Typically, um, you know, I have a whole 30 day process that um, we, we go through, but it's let's hit them th three days in a row, give them a rest for a day, hit them again on day five, give them a rest for a couple of days. And then it, it the rest days kind of widen out as we get towards, you know, 30 and then like at day 12 and then it goes to 15, 20, 25 and then mm -hmm. 30 is the last one. And I can't tell you how many times that we've gotten people on day 25 or the last kind of message that goes out to them, voicemail messages like, hey, look, you know, we've been trying to get a hold of you for the last month. Obviously, you're super busy or you're not long, you're no longer interested. So I'm going to go ahead and close out your file. And that alone triggers so many people to go, oh, I don't want my file closed out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they'll respond. They're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I really am interested. And then that starts the conversation. And, and you know, our clients are so thankful. They're like, oh, I would have given up after the first phone call. I said, I know that you, I know you would have. That's why your business yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so I think that's a that's a great uh, a great thing for people to hear, Tom. So um, in in your experience, um, you know, how often does that actually happen? Happen because it's a great it's a great example of elegant persistence. But how often does that happen that it's somebody like way you know way towards the end of your process when you actually get them? Yeah, I mean it's it's probably one percent. It's a, it's mm -hmm. a low percentage. Um, we actually get about 25% of the people on the phone and, and have, they take an action at 25% mm -hmm. of all yeah. inbound. Right, inquiry. right, yeah. right. No, the, it's, it's excellent. So, um, and I guess, uh, and the scripting part, as you said, is, is very important. Um, but obviously, obviously 
not just having the script, but making it natural and engaging mm -hmm. and all of that. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, be honest, like I picked up a voicemail this morning um, from somebody and clearly they were reading a script. Um, yeah. They were tripping over the words. They were all of this. It, it was it was very obvious. It was nothing natural. I felt sorry, to be honest. I felt sorry for the poor guy who left the message because yeah. I'm just thinking like nobody's nobody's going to return your calls. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's that's what I, I train my staff or clients uh, do training with me is how we have a script, obviously, because mm -hmm. people need the words yeah. uh, or the, the structure. And then how do we make that your own? How do we phrase it properly? How do we do it in your language in terms of our own you know, thought process language? Um, and, it, and it flows a lot better, especially if you want to have a human connection with somebody and just a real conversation. Right. The, word, the words are there to help guide you. But at the end of the day, it's about the conversation that you're going to have with that prospect. Yeah. So, I mean, that's obviously why you, you, you need to make it your own and practice and, and all of, and all of that um, and all of that good stuff. Uh, but, um, but one, one of the other things I think when it, uh, when it comes to kind of comes to leads, as you said, is getting people really to commit to engage it rather to see it as a hassle. Right. So part of it is attitude and mindset as well, because I do feel sometimes when, people follow up on leads, you can almost hear it in their voices that they don't expect anything to come from this. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's, that's, you know, the second part of the scripting is what is your expectation? And if, would you, and I do this a lot. And in fact, I just got off a coaching call where we're reviewing calls that the, the salesperson was making. And it was like, would you return this phone call? Like, you know what? Probably not. Okay, well, what do you need to do different in terms of amping up? Like, and the, the other aspect that I tell people is, you know, it might be your hundredth phone call of the day. It's that person's first call from you. Make it count. Yeah, and I think that's a I think that's a critical point because I mean, let's make no bones about it. Like, it's hard, right? And you know, constantly following up and getting you know, and and the 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 uh, response rates and whatever. You know, you have to you have to have some fortitude in there. But to your point is, uh, if I'm getting a call from you or picking up a voicemail from you, and it sounds like your hundredth call of the day. Uh, then I'm not going to be that interested. So, so how do you how do you help people stay motivated? So it's you know their last call of the day is as impactful as their first. Yeah, well, it's just that statement is you know it might be your hundredth call of the day, mm -hmm. but it's their first call. So make it count. Make it your you know, make it what you would want to receive on the other end, and you know pretend like you're calling a friend. You know, that, that's the easiest thing to do is just like, you know, call a friend and yeah. or, or give this an opportunity to make a new friend like, oh, OK, yeah, I like talking to people. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I think that I think that I think that's a, a, a incredibly important because, like I said, I think uh, sometimes it's really sad when you hear that in people's voices or whatever, that they really just don't believe that you're actually going to uh, going to take any any action at all. And uh, and that idea just you just said is like you know calling a, like you're calling a friend you know that that engaging part. But just going back to what you're saying a minute ago about coaching, um, mm -hmm. how often do you think people who who do lead follow up? How often do you think they actually even record themselves and listen to their own calls and and do what you yeah. go through the process that you just said about like listen to yourself? Would you would you take your call? Yeah, no, they, they don't do it. I, I would I would bet that like. 99.99999% yeah. don't, don't do that unless they're part of an organization that mm -hmm. requires. Yeah. And so when you're doing, when you're doing those coaching sessions with people, what are, what are some of the things that surprise them when you go through a session, like surprise maybe that they're doing that they didn't realize? Well, a lot of times it's just the tone of voice. So mm -hmm. like, Oh, I didn't realize I came across like that. I was like, yeah, I mean, you do. So what do we need to do to make that different? Or the pauses that they have, they're like, or they talk over people. You know, it's, it's all different things that it's, we're not aware of when we do it over and over and over again. And it's until we listen to ourselves. And I got to tell you, I love to hear the sound of my own voice. So I have no problem <laughs> listening to my own. 
Just kidding. <laughs> it's, you know, I hate listening to my own phone calls. And um, I was just editing a video where I do an actual sales call. And I'm like, oh, geez, you know, how many more ums can I have in, in this conversation? Right. But, you know, it, it helps in terms of identifying what you need to improve. That's the only way you can do it. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely 100% agree. And yeah, yeah, it's uh, who, who likes really listening to themselves or, uh, and obviously at times, um, it's it's awkward. But but if you want to improve, that's what you've got to do. And and it's so, it's so funny, like how we don't really know what we sound like, how we come off and until we do that work. And, and it's almost like, um, yeah, it's one thing to be avoiding following up on your leads or doing that. But I mean, if you're avoiding actually improving how you do it as well, that's a double negative. Yeah, absolutely. It's a recipe for it. <laughs> and you know, apart from that, um, uh, is, is there anything else that you've ever come across that's kind of surprised, like a, a, a rudimentary mistake that people make? Taking control of the conversation from the very beginning. I, I think that that is one of the, I've had seasoned salespeople that just let the prospect take control of the conversation. I'm like, you know, how are you ever going to move that person to where you want to move them to if you're not the one in control? And that comes from the immediate moment that they pick up the phone or you're answering the phone from them. It's you're in control, you're the one in charge, you're going to move that conversation forward to where you want it to go. Yeah. And, and part of that comes, isn't it? I mean, you have to have the confidence and belief in what you're actually, you know, selling or following up on. Uh, because that's the other part that comes across a lot is, you know, when you feel like somebody's authentically enthusiastic and really believes in their product and really wants you, really wants you to learn about it, as opposed to somebody who you just don't even hear the enthusiasm for what they're selling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, listen, uh, Tom, this has been this has been great. Um, Tom and uh, Taiwan. It's a nice ring, <laughs> isn't it? Um, all of Tom's this information. Tom <laughs> um, all of Tom's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. So um, I'm a digital nomad of sorts. So I am in, in, in Taiwan right now, but I offer uh, sales coaching. I have a YouTube channel uh, under my same name, Tom Jacobs, um, that offers a lot of sales training, presentation training, selling from the stage. It's kind of my, my niche that I, that I work in. And then I also operate a call center where uh, we work with primarily medical doctors and uh, fitness centers, or people in the wellness space, mm -hmm. to book appointments for them and to confirm webinars and do sales. Yeah. Kind of Fantastic. Well, I would uh, I would encourage you to to uh, check out Tom. And let's face it, uh, when it comes to leads, we can always improve, and it's a continuous improvement. Um, it's continuous improvement process. So I would encourage you to check it out and check out the YouTube channel as well. Again, listen, thanks, Tom. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.